All right, here we are today. Let's uh, pull out some of these blanks and uh, uh, let's start thickness sanding the maple tops. Time to change the sandpaper on this guy. Uh, it's just, I tried to get it out with a, a crepe block, a rubber crepe block, but there's just too much pitch embedded in, in this paper. And it's actually kind of dull. So let's change her up. All right, and of course I should point. I should point out <laughs> safety. thicker than inch and three-quarter. That's where I want it because uh, after we glue on the top and then we can shove the whole thing through and clean up the back if there are any clamp marks. In that. All right time to cut out the uh, tops and the bodies. Uh, I was going to use my old template here, but uh, the other day I actually met up with Tom Bartlett and uh, and Peter Shoup, both uh, guys that I know from the, the my Les Paul forum, and um, he brought me a set of his templates. So we're going to try these out, and also not only just the templates, but uh, his plans. We're going to be using his plans, inlay template nylon, Italian plastic, nothing like that Italian plastic. <laughs> um, yeah, so cool. We're going to check all this stuff out. Right, so the first thing I did with all of Tom's templates was mark center line um, on each side. And so I'm going to use the template to uh, draw the outline so that we can bandsaw this out. But I want to um, I want to cut it out oversize, and I have a it's just my usual procedure for when I, I don't like to glue anything up that is to its finished size. I want it oversized, and we'll get into that later uh, because I do the necks the same way. Um, I, I kind of build necks in an unconventional way, not the way Gibson does it, and the way most people do it. But we'll get, we'll get to that later. So, in order to get my oversized outline, I'm just going to use this washer. Looks like it's got about a quarter of an inch wall. And uh, once we have the guitar, yeah, center line looks good. I'll just ride the washer along. So, the whole guitar is going to be about a quarter of an inch oversized on each side. We 
go. Let's cut this bad boy out. So for cutting out the shape of the uh, the uh, tops and the bodies, I uh, took out my resaw blade and installed this brand new quarter inch blade. It's got six teeth per inch, and uh, it just makes it much easier to get around the corners and the you know the tight waist and the uh, the cutaway of the of the body. Here we are. Uh, it is December 14, 2016, and uh, look at the season change. We've got snow on the ground. Anyway, back to the Les Pauls. So, what I've got now is um, after the last time I pushed 
each of these pieces through the thickness sander. I left them all oversized by, oh, maybe uh, 50 thou of an inch, something like that. And that was a few days back. Today, I just pushed them through the thickness sander again, both the maple caps and the mahogany bodies. And um, sure enough, what I did was I put pencil lines over the entire surface. And as I pushed it through very lightly, a very light pass through the thickness sander, I could see that, you know, it might take, it took some of this side off and some of that side off, or on some of them, a little bit just in the middle. So that uh, told me that, you know, they did acclimatize and they did twist and warp a little bit uh, while they were stickered in my shop. And that was uh, sitting at about 43, 44% relative humidity. So uh, it's good. Now I've uh, cleaned them up and they're nice and uh, flat and they're mating very well. Now the one last thing I'm going to do before actually gluing and clamping them is I'm going to scrape both surfaces, both gluing surfaces of the mahogany and also the maple. And the reason I'm going to scrape it is because, um, as you may know, I've talked about this in other videos before, a planed or scraped surface, meaning um, a wood cell that's cleanly sliced is a, the ideal surface to glue, to glue to. So, um, I mean, if you were to take this under a microscope and look at uh, what the thickness sander, a sanding drum, does to these surfaces. Yeah, sure, it feels smooth and all, uh, but really it, it, it tears up the fibers, and, um, and we, want, we don't want that. We want nice, cleanly severed fibers. So um, I'm going to show you how I uh, set up my scraper blade. We're going we're gonna to scrape it and uh, then clamp it. So here's my scraper blade. I've got a number of scraper blades, uh, different shapes and sizes. Um, but uh, this is the one we're going to use to scrape the large flat surface area. So first thing I'm going to do is just uh, set it up in my vise here and uh, with a mill file I'm just going to give it a, a touch up to rejuvenate the edge. And then we're going to take it over to a diamond sharpening stone and finish it up. So the filed edge leaves kind of a rough surface and we need to refine that, we need to clean it up. So what I'm going to do is, this is a diamond stone, it's a sharpening stone, and um, I'm going to refine that edge here like so. But I'm just going to use this little scrap block of plywood and stand it up here and ride this alongside of it just to keep everything square, right? And I change positions every now and then. I mean, it is a diamond stone, but I don't want to wear out one spot. Okay. And I will do that until I see that the entire edge has got the same sheen, meaning that, uh, you know, I've taken out the uh, file scratches and have nothing but the diamond abraded surface left. So we're almost there. Alright, that looks pretty good. So now that uh, we've done the edge, um, just like sharpening any other edge tool, uh, we have to sharpen the intersecting uh, plane of steel. So uh, that means putting it down flat and getting rid of the burr that I just created uh, by sharpening the edge. There, I can feel it the bite of the burr and I just kind of took it off and we go back to sharpening the edge one more time. We do this, we cycle through this process a few times until um, the, the very edge is really nice and square and sharp and there's no burr turned over. You know, still feeling a little bit of a burr on that side. Not bad on this side. And 
a couple of swipes. Yeah, that feels pretty good. All right, now we move on to our burnishing tool. All right, now on to burnishing. Uh, this is a Stumac burnishing tool. I don't know if they still sell these. I bought this like uh, 25 years ago or so. But before I had this one, I remember my dad showing me how to do this years and years before that when I was uh, little. And he used this old file. Check this out. He took this old file and ground all the teeth off it and, and uh, kind of polished it so it's smooth. The, the, uh, the point here is that it's really a hard piece of metal. Uh, because what you want what we want to do here is we want to take this nice square edge that we just created on the scraper and turn a hook. And in order to do that, first we have to create a new burr by uh, pressing this edge like so. And what it does is it kind of mushrooms out a, a, a hook, a piece of metal that comes out like this. And then after we've got that, we... Uh, we take the burnishing tool at an angle like this and turn, basically we turn the hook over. So we have a tiny little micro blade. We end up with one of those. So uh, I'm just going to use the Stumac tool to show you how this goes. I set it up on the edge and here is our hardened piece of metal. I'm just going to stroke it with it laying flat. And I'm putting some real heavy pressure on this and I'm going to do the same to the other side there we go and now we're going to turn the hook yeah I can feel the hook there There's the phone, and I think this hook is good. I'll be right back. All right, so I needed to set up a stop for the uh, the top so that it doesn't move around while I'm scraping it. So I pulled out this scrap. This is a you know a, a bandsaw leftover piece, and uh, I just put this little riser in because we thickness sanded the actual top, and it works out just perfect. The thing to avoid is the edges. I don't want to scrape too close to the edges because what happens, this is one of the reasons why I uh, cut them oversized to begin with. Because when you scrape close to the edge, it wants to dig into the edge and um, take more material off that area. So be, be very, very careful around the edges. And I think that's all, that's all it takes. Just to knock off all those ridges from the uh, sanding drum. Looks good. And one last thing, we'll check with uh, my trusty straight edge. This is one of the most valuable tools that uh, is in the shop. This is a Sterrett 24 inch straight edge. And uh, yeah, I really rely on this for everything. So let's take a look this way. That's good. And yeah, we're good. We'll do the mahogany body, same thing on the gluing surface, and uh, put them together. <coughs> All right, here's the first body, and we just did a dry run of clamps. We're getting our clamping situation all ready ahead of time so we're not fumbling around when the actual the glue is on and we're ready to go. So now we're going to take it apart and uh, do it for real. Mm, that stuff is sticky. <laughs> yeah.
a little more over here in this area, and a little more around this area here. It's just a little bit starved, I think. Yeah. That's better. Okay, ready? Okie dokie, here we go. Next time you don't have to use all the powder. No, no, no. So, here we go, Tim's, Tim's body. And we lift it up, upside down, okay. And, um, you know, I'll just hold it like this, if you want to get some clamps ready. Oh, uh, we'll, we'll put the big, big block on there. Eh? Big block, right under where the uh, bridge location is. is yeah, yeah, that's good. And, uh... Yeah. Let me just make sure our locations are good. I got pencil. No, no, slack it off a bit. There. And I'm good here. Yeah. I'll let it rip. Okay, that's good. Maybe a couple of machinist clamps here, just to uh, immobilize it. I still feel it wants to shift around, slide around. We're going to put a couple of uh, hardwood calls on here so that we don't mar that mahogany. I don't care about marring the maple top because that's going to be all carved anyway. I'll go in a little bit further. Whoa, that's that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Back off, back off. Swing. Yeah. Yeah, it really shifted around. Okay, no. I can get rid of this here. That's something like that, huh? Yeah. You see, the looks best, good. The best it's good. Yeah. Place, you place to Oh, for sure. Clamp. Yeah. Jesus Christ. You really can't spin it around. Just enough to pin it. Yeah. And then one here as well. All right. Now we're looking at some squeeze out happening. Cool. And uh, you want to go around and clamp, throw some more clamps on, I'm going to clean up that squeeze out. Got it. Good. Three, four, five. No. Okay. 
These blue ones right here, big blue ones. Oh yeah. Oh. Maybe one of them on no, each end no, here. No. And a little bit of a no. maple call. Right? Looking good. Look at that, it's a forest of clamps. So, uh, we're going to bring this in the house where it's uh, 70 degrees and uh, we're going to leave this clamped up for they say 24 hours, but we're going to do 20. We're going to do 48, just just for good measure. Say hello. Hi there. <laughs> Where are you? Are? <laughs>